Hey everyone and welcome back to Scandalous Media. It's Angela here and I'm back with a video that I had to revamp because I pushed it to the end of my list but I felt like you guys would still enjoy it as it is still relevant. I had originally recorded this video when TMZ caught Harry and Meghan at the elite celebrity sushi restaurant Sushi Bar in Santa Barbara where their eyewitnesses said it was just the two of them dining together but ever since the car chase scenario in New York, I never got to editing it. So I re-recorded it because I didn't only talk about the trending news at the time, but more so about Megan's game of illusion and how she uses her public portfolio to almost fake it until she makes it. And that's relevant today, especially with the rumors of how she was collaborating with Dior, only for Dior to be like, oh no, we did not collab with her. And of course, with the Spotify deal failing. Now a video about that just went up, so go check it out. So this video will take you inside the media games that Harry, and more so Megan, play. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe for new videos each week, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss the live chat premiere we do for each video, and follow us on our social media. So on May 13, TMZ caught Megan and Harry at Sushi Bar, and here they are exiting the restaurant at around 7pm alongside their security. Now something interesting happened as the story kept unfolding, which is why I felt like this video was still relevant to post. TMZ were the ones to photograph the couple, and like with most Harry and Meghan outings, there are often just a few photos taken of them, as opposed to the several taken by usual paparazzi catching a celebrity, leading many to assume that the pictures are staged after the paparazzi are called. And these photos were supplied by TMZ through Backrid, which is the usual photo agency responsible for distributing Harry and Meghan's photos. And it's even funnier revisiting the story after the car chase drama and Backrid exposing Harry and Meghan, which I already made two videos about that, so go check them out. Now you guys know I always report the top scandalous information and I'm always looking for the little details that the media misses. And one thing that I found interesting was how the original TMZ article doesn't make mention of anyone else in the photo, but later on, fans or just people on social media noticed that it was Cameron Diaz in the frame of the photo. Sushi date with A-listers. TMZ doesn't mention this at all, but the following day on May 14th, after the photos were published on the 13th, Page Six released an article writing. However, Page Six is told that they weren't actually solo. We're told they dined with Gwyneth Paltrow and her husband, TV producer Brad Fulchuk. Obviously, TMZ's onlookers didn't tell them that as TMZ wrote they were dining solo, but it was the later Page Six who was contacted by a source, assumingly from Harry and Meghan's camp. Now, unlike all the leaks that Harry and Meghan seem to do on purpose, we here at Scandalous Media value our privacy and security, which is why we use Atlas VPN. Thank you to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. You guys know we've worked with Atlas VPN before, and we love them because they provide that extra layer of added security we all need. A VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and with Atlas VPN, you can hide your public IP address, get the best deals while shopping online, and more. Atlas VPN is currently running a huge summer discount, which means you can get a three-year subscription for just a dollar. 83 cents per month plus three months extra with a 30-day money-back guarantee using my link in the description. This is the most affordable deal out there. You guys know I say it how it is, whether it's controversial or not, and that upsets some people who love trying to hack you or dox you for having a different opinion. And with Atlas VPN, you can stop ads and malware, block all malicious links, and they notify you when someone's trying to steal your data. It's super easy to use, it just takes a few minutes to set up, just pick the country of your choice, connect, and you have a personal superhero protecting you online. You can also use a single subscription for an unlimited number of devices. You can keep your Google searches private without having your activity tracked, especially this summer if you want to book flights or hotels but still avoid price increases. You can also use it to browse streaming content that's unavailable in your home country, which is how I watch my favorite shows on Netflix or read articles that aren't typically available in the US. So make sure you grab this big summer deal right now as it's a limited time offer. It's the best deal in the market for a three year subscription for just $1.83 per month, plus three months extra and a 30 day money back guarantee using my link in the description box. Thank you Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Page Six continues. The foursome was also accompanied by Cameron Diaz and her husband, Benji Madden, as well as the CEO and founder of Bumble, Whitney Wolfherd, and her husband, Texas oil heir, Michael Hurd. All I'm seeing is connections, connections, connections. It makes you think, 
Were they trying to make new connections considering now looking back at the story, we know that they had already cut ties with Spotify and Dior was not going through, and now they're on the verge of being blacklisted by anyone important in the industry after being labeled as grifters. Now what I find odd about this is how this was never mentioned in the original article by TMZ and it was only Harry and Meghan along with the side profile of Cameron Diaz and the back of Benji Madden who were photographed and yet someone had to let us know that Gwyneth Paltrow was there along with a bunch of other high profile and connection filled people. And I have a hard time believing it was anyone else besides Harry and Meghan considering they are the ones that were photographed and no one else was besides whom I already mentioned. As for my personal opinion, I believe that the photographers were called to the scene, which is standard protocol in Hollywood, TMZ obtained the photos, and wrote about who they were there for, aka Meghan and Harry. I believe that the photographers were called by Harry and Meghan's camp, more specifically Meghan, who needs to build her public portfolio, and being photographed is the way to do so, which I'll explain later in the video. I also believe that because the rest of the crowd that they were dining with wasn't photographed, Megan had to run to her publicist, who ran to page 6 to break down the play-by-play -play of everyone who's there, what they're famous for, and what they're known for. And for all we know, maybe they weren't even dining with Megan and Harry. But page 6 is known as a reputable site that I personally love reading, and I've been in contact with people behind page 6, so I know the rundown. And Meghan and Harry often leak information to Page Six, who was also the first one to confirm and announce that Harry and Meghan's Netflix soap opera was set to premiere in early December. This was something that was unknown at the time. No one knew if the series would get pushed to the following year, considering Meghan's concerns, or if it was set to be released as early as it did in December following the Queen's passing. So it's been a site that Meghan and Harry break a lot of news to, and I've been watching this go down. Y'all know me, I'm here for the drama and scandalous tea. Game of Illusion Megan often plays this game of illusion where if she portrays herself the way she wants to be perceived, she ends up obtaining the results she wants. This is psychology, you guys can read up about it, and it's something that's often used in the world of Hollywood because Hollywood and celebrities are nothing but illusions. You can see this play out with her rebrand from the cut photo shoot to the variety photo shoot which I've talked about in the past. Also, I have good news, the psychology of Meghan Markle is officially in production and I'm excited for you guys to see it so stay tuned to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss the live chat that we do for every video. Meghan often does this when her camp is always reporting how she and Harry are invited to the Oscars or the Met Gala or any sort of high profile event which creates this illusion that they're popular enough to receive a prestigious invite and in return, constantly hearing about it in the press may lead to a proper invitation being extended their way if there is this illusion of demand. You know what they say, the more you hear about something, the more you may start to believe it. And every year, we see the same stories and every year, they are not invited to anything important. This was also seen by the rumors spiraling through the media through Meghan's camp claiming that she was about to sign a huge multi-million dollar deal with Dior. Meanwhile, that was never happening at all and Dior was so embarrassed to even be attached to Meghan's name, they came out and said, we have not had any recent contact with her. And I already explained that in my recent video. Now, making connections and trying to be relatable isn't something I'm hating on them by any means, it's just exposing the games they use to their own benefit. We even see Kensington Palace do this nowadays by releasing all these cinematic videos of the Wales family at the coronation or prepping for the coronation and it gives this illusion of them being relatable even though there is nothing relatable about the royal family. But it gives us a sense of being closer to them through the footage they share. They need to do this in order to appeal to the younger generation and allow them to get familiar with the future king and queen. Same thing with the psychology behind Taylor Swift and how her fans feel ultra close to her and to everything in her life, meanwhile they don't really know her aside from what she puts out there for them to perceive her as. These are examples of parasocial relationships and they are commonly seen in fan bases and their relationship to their favorite celebrity. And celebrities capitalize on this. So how do I get into this psychology analysis from a simple sushi date? The fact that we have additional reps making sure to inform us of the crowd dining with our favorite privacy-loving couple, despite them not being photographed or seen by onlookers at all, tells me that those who leaked the news, most likely Meghan and Harry, 
want us and the world to know all about their fancy little connections because this breeds more connections in the future. And considering everyone is dropping them, they definitely need the connections since credibility can't and won't vouch for them. What do you guys think about my analysis? Do you agree or do you think I'm reading too much into it? Even though I don't believe there's such a thing as reading too much into anything, considering most celebrities are very calculated in the public eye and every step is often intentional. You guys will see this very clearly in the Psychology of Meghan Markle video and how careful and intentional Meghan was with her actions when she originally started dating Harry in order to get him to commit to her. And what is the best part of this, you may ask? She basically exposes herself on Netflix. No wonder why she was so worried about this series being released. Make sure you check out my Netflix recap series where I recap the entire soap opera and exposed every lie told in each episode. Pregnancy Rumors Rumors of Meghan being pregnant have been swirling around since February 2023 after Star Magazine broke a story writing that multiple sources have told them that Meghan is pregnant. People even believe that the reason she wasn't attending the coronation was because she's pregnant, which I don't believe. I've covered the coronation drama already and it's obvious that their coronation demands got denied and therefore Meghan didn't go as confirmed by her spokesperson, Omid Scobie. But the rumors originated from Star Magazine when Meghan was featured on the cover with a headline saying, Thrilled Meghan, pregnant again at 41, three months along and glowing. Is that so? They wrote that Meghan's friends are buzzing that she's pregnant with baby number three, with one source insisting it was totally unexpected. When the test came back positive, Meghan and Harry went into a state of disbelief, says the first source. Having another kid naturally was not part of their plan. While pals say the pair are taken aback, they're thrilled, they're in love and consider it a sign from the universe, says the source. They even went as far as to say, Meghan will likely give birth at the Santa Barbara Cottage Hospital again where she welcomed Lily, with the source saying her experience there was amazing and then detailing it exactly how it went down. And Meghan only gave life to these rumors when she was photographed with Harry at a dinner date wearing this oversized jacket that almost looks as if she wore it backward from how huge it is. And this isn't the first time Meghan plays on rumors using her clothes. Remember when she purposefully left her coat button unbuttoned at Princess Eugenie's wedding, leading many to assume that she's pregnant and having the media speculate? Turns out it was true, with Harry even confirming the rumors that they told the family she was pregnant at Eugenie's wedding in spare. So you can't tell me that that was not planned. Megan's pregnancies have always been controversial with many believing she was never really pregnant and she just wore a fake bump and actually had a surrogate. What do you guys think? Do you believe she was ever pregnant with baby number three or was it all a planned story leaked to the press to stir up some headlines? Because as someone who has run a celebrity gossip blog for over a decade, I'll tell you right now that celebrities leak fake stories all the time to keep them talked about and interesting. Former editor of Star Magazine, Shallon Lester, has previously said that when it came to the royal family, they didn't have any inside tea about them because the royal family kept everything super private. And it was only when Meghan came onto the scene that the information was being leaked daily, especially from Meghan who was a source to these media outlets in the past, so that's something to keep in mind. Now this pregnancy talk comes after the sushi date with TMZ, writing that them assumingly having raw fish for dinner debunks the pregnancy rumors considering you're not supposed to eat raw fish while pregnant. And even if they were pregnant with baby number three, that would be controversial and hypocritical since Harry told British Vogue in 2019 that they'd have two maximum in an effort to help save the planet. And many believe that that was shade thrown at William and Catherine who have three kids. Either way, not having kids to save the planet is the same performative activism as talking about climate change but taking a private jet every single time. Performative, exhausting, and quite frankly, unhelpful. Anyway, Megan has been looking super skinny lately, so I highly doubt she's pregnant, and considering it is kinda later for her, and she has had a past suffering of miscarriages, allegedly, it's hard to believe. I think it was a planted story for sure. Megan's public portfolio. The reason celebrities need to be photographed and need to stay talked about by the media, despite all their efforts of pretending like they don't care about fame and attention, all has to do with them building their public portfolio. This goes hand in hand with the illusion game because the way you present yourself in public affects how people perceive you and you can use that to your advantage. For example, Hailey Bieber is known as a big style icon and she's often photographed everywhere she goes, wearing the latest fashion trends and even creating her own. She's building her public portfolio of being a trendy style icon and she makes sure she dresses to impress considering that's what she's building her brand on. 
That's why you won't catch her wearing something ugly, as opposed to a musician on their day off who doesn't care about their fashion style in the slightest, aka Justin Bieber. Which is why you'll see him looking like this, while Hailey looks like that. So Megan has been making public appearances and wearing fashionable items because she has a portfolio to build and she probably wants to compete with her sister-in-law, Princess Catherine, who is a big asset to the fashion industry and is known for her fashion. This is a fashion rebrand that we saw with Kim Kardashian when she first started dating Kanye West and that is something we briefly discussed in the Met Gala video. Megan is still trying to make a name for herself that isn't D-list American actress who scammed her way into the royal family and now makes a living off of complaining about her 72 days of royal work. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my take on Harry and Meghan's public appearances, media games, and overall industry insight. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you like these types of videos. Make sure to like and subscribe for more videos each week, check out our Meghan and Harry playlist, follow us on our social media, and as always, I'll see you next time.